enjoyed their white hairs as well, you have a rare opportunity to watch two grandmasters trade. Over the next 45 minutes, you'll see firsthand how Francis and Boris make money in live market environments against all odds. And we've got some tricks up our sleeves to make today even more challenging for our trading battle. But this is the best opportunity for you to get a sense of how these trade grandmaster traders trade when the odds are against them. To the New York market open. Boris, how are the markets moving and what trades will you be looking to kick us off with? Well, it's a negative risk environment. First of all, by the way, I really resent that gray hair comment. As my hairdresser said, just be glad that you still have hair. So I'm still fighting the good fight. Um, negative risk um, environment in front of the market today. Friday market seems to be, I think, a little bit leery after having a very, very big run up. Yields are lower, equities are lower uh, significantly, crypto is lower. Uh, in front of the event today, we have Canadian GDP, which is projected to be lower than on a QQ basis around 0 0.3, negative 0 0.3 contraction. I am going to try to bet that it's going to be even worse than expected. Um, I'm watching my Canadian dollar cat trade right, uh, dollar cat chart right now, and as you can see, if you look at my chart here, uh, which plots the session highs, session lows, the lower red line is the session low, um, the green line is the session high. We're sort of like in the in the lower third of the range, um, and it's actually indicating that that the market may be looking to sell dollar cat, get positive Canadian data, and as you can see, uh, the market really is looking to sell the Canadian data in front of the. Um, uh, in front of the event, but I think the event might be might be negative. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go against the market um, by dollar cat here at market 24.37. Um, here's the thing: if uh, the data prints better than expected and we break the session lows at 25, I'm going to stop and reverse and short the trade because that means that uh, the numbers should be pretty good and we want to get long um, dollar cat. The other trade that I'm looking at right now, just on a purely technical basis, I really like this because. Uh, because we had a natural spike here early in the morning uh, in the Australian dollar against the euro dollar, euro dollar spike to session highs. Again, this is the session high in the euro dollar. Um, and now it's starting to work off that move. And I want to be short this trade because I think it's going to work its way back down to the 6110 level. So this should be an exciting one. We've got, you know, initial entry. And when the data kicks off in about 10 minutes, that could kick us either um, into a target or into a new trade. Francis, what are you looking at? Oh. Yes. Hey, guys, how are you? A um, couple of things on the FX side uh, of possible interest. Uh, a commodity that would be Western Texas Intermediate and maybe a little bit of slipping on uh, the cryptos. We'll see. Uh, so let's get more specific. Uh, on the Let's start with the FX side. Uh, I've been looking at the yen. Uh, against the dollar. I know there's Canadian news coming. There might be a shift in, but I'm not feeling anything particularly strongly in those charts. So I won't be competing or having a, a similar view to uh, Boris there. I'll let that one uh, pan out. I like to see some form of the technical analysis pre a news, giving a little bit of a tip of the hand, uh, or at least the market putting their best guess forward. And I, I'm not feeling it particularly. So uh, uh, let's talk about the USD JPY, first of all. Um, get it up. Uh, hopefully you're seeing that. Uh, now, uh, time frames, we've got 45 minutes to make uh, some money. I think this will actually ease back down, but in the more medium term, it's breaking up. So hence, when I take a look at the, the CAD, I actually see the CAD, if anything, coming off. I can't quite recall what Boris's position was. Sorry, I missed whether he wants to be long or short, but it looks like softening to me. So maybe, be maybe I should be... Uh, both. Uh, maybe I will actually take the CAD, uh, make take a, a trade on the CAD, and I, I'd be quite happy to go um, your standard lot allocation short right now on the CAD. So if you hit me at markets, and I'll take a stop at 124.52. So this is very tactical. It's not typical of what we do, but at a candle level, these wicks are showing resistance for me. So let me just really boost this in scale so everyone can see because I'm going to give you my first trade live now in the go. Uh, if we got CAD news, I don't like these two candles. Oops, let's change that to orange. I don't like these two candles and I think there's rejection on there. And I'm seeing on the euro and other places, I'm expecting about a dollar strength. So hit me at market now, please, and stop at this level, which I'll shout out and confirm to you again. In other words, I accept I'm wrong on my trade idea, which every trader should do. 
I love that. Boris is long dollar cat. Francis is short dollar cat. So we're I'm going to have him on. Yes, you're taking him on. We're going to have Head on. six minutes. We're going to, two gentlemen are going to duke it out and see who's the cat Canadian dollar king. Okay, so Go Boris ahead, right. has a cat long trade, um, a Dow long trade, as well as a Euro Aussie um, short trade on the books. Francis, you've got um, dollar cat short. Is this dollar yen that we're just looking at? Do you want to wrap some levels around it or we're just looking at the I'll chart? I'll come here? back to it. I don't think it's fully ready. A um, little bit of softness coming into oil if it's back with me. Uh, I don't want to over commentate. I'm just not seeing anything I want to rush, even though we've only got the time frame we have. I'm, I want to be pretty sure that the move is pretty imminent. So I'm, I'm watching just so that guys know. I think we're getting a little bit toppy here, and I'm talking about dollar strength again. So this could move into an easing uh, situation on the, the uh, oils if we're close. Generally, that last candle, if you have a look at that, was quite brutal. So possibly a trade brewing here. We'll see if this turns into upside continuation. If we start ticking up through that, I'll back off. If we show more weakness, I'll probably uh, look at uh, small tactical shorts, and I'll drop you levels for that as and when. So I've just got the one trade at the moment, taking the other side of the CAD uh, into the news. I cannot wait to see how these trades pan out. We're about a minute and a half away from the Canadian GDP and personal incomes, personal spending data. So um, we'll we turn back to that when the numbers come out. Now, in many ways, um, today's trades are forced market conditions because as a trader, I know none of us just turn on our screens and randomly pay, place a trade. You hear it in Francis' hesitation voice, and perhaps, you know, that is the um, self-control that makes him as successful as he is. We'd like to wait for our setup and trade when everything lines up. But today, we're going to have some fun and mix things up. We have, I don't want to go immediately to it because we've got about 30 seconds to the data. So gentlemen, I'll let you kind of look at your charts and here we go. We've got some numbers coming out. Um, don't see any movement yet in um, dollar CAD. Uh, it's moving a little bit lower. Do you guys see what the numbers are? Um, yeah, uh, the Canadian Canadian data is in line 3.3. Against 3.3, the PPI was a little bit hotter at zero against negative four. Consumer spending in the U.S. is one against uh, against seven, so that's a better that's a better number. Dow is popping a little bit, but not quite to my target. I'm I'm looking to to see if it can get it up to uh, 35,000. It's 34,991 right now. So not you know a, a relatively tepid reaction in the market so far, but I'm still trying to hold on to my uh, to my positions. Um, other that's than that, we I, just right. We're that's getting, what I see. PC yeah. number, the GDP numbers from CAD are right in line. The prior data was revised a little lower, which should be good for Boris's trade, but it's a monthly number. We don't really know it's going to have that much of an impact. And as he said, personal income was better. Personal spending was better, which should be good for dollar, like Francis indicated. So, you know, we're going to float these trades and see how they go. All right, so, um, Francis, I'm going to give you the opportunity first to give Boris three trades that, that you absolutely hate and you want him to be in. Oh, wow. Uh, putting my in a tough position, the ambush trade. Uh, yeah, so typically cryptos have a high uh, volatility. I think he's planning something for that for me. So I'm, I feel obliged to return the compliment. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, I, I actually had a bit of a pause area. So I'm showing Bitcoin. I don't know if that's showing up. Uh, so that's a major one that's well listed. Uh, had a, a fairly clear cut rejection of the 40K level after one of our setups. And so, yeah, uh, maybe putting Boris in uh, long there might be an idea. I'm going to just check Ethereum um, close to one of our key areas of support. I want to put him maybe uh, long in a crypto, but this actually does have a base of support under it. I want to see it spill. So maybe I'll go back to uh, the Bitcoin. Actually, I don't think these are bad places either way right now. I wouldn't trade yeah. them either um, way. It's not awful. Sorry, I'm going to I'm gonna take 10 on my Euro Aussie right now. It's 26. I was short from 35. So we'll take 10 pips on Euro Aussie yeah. on my trade. We'll close that out. Um, and sorry, go ahead. You torture me with your cryptos. Oh, uh, also, I think I'll sorry, put you short. Dow, Dow hit 35,000. Done with that. NASDAQ hit 14,890. Done with that. So 15 Dow, 10, 10 NASDAQ. Close, close, close. All those things. We're done on my on my indice trades. Keep going. Go ahead. I'm gonna put 
uh, Boris in short on Bitcoin. I think there might be a small during this period counter rally as we came into uh, support. So a short at 38,800s. Okay. All right, so um, one crypto. Give him, uh, one. give him that and he can give me one back. Um, yeah. So you stole my thunder on crypto. Um, I, you know, I hate the, uh, so you, you put it, sorry, you're putting me short Bitcoin, right? Not long. I Bitcoin? put you short. You can keep it uh, if you want. Oh, really? Uh, short. short. Yes. At 38,800. Because I think it's going to have a small counter rally at close support. So uh, for this small window of time frame, I actually think it's going to be in counter trend to that sell-off. So I think it might nibble you away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I agree with you. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to, in 10 minutes, I'm probably going to dump that trade. But um, for you, I'm going to put you long ETH. Even though ETH looks like it's basing, I'm going to put you long ETH. It's going to go against my instincts, but... Um, it's still looking very negative to me, so I'm going to put you long at ETH at this point at 23.39. So that'll be my crypto exchange to you. So you're putting me long uh, ETH. Uh, I'm actually preferring yeah. that. Uh, in fact, uh, so I'll double that position that he's given me. So he's put me long oh. one unit. I'll go another on top. Wow, I love that. I love that. All right, the time is here for our last challenge. So it's Friday, we're heading into a new week, it's end of the month. Next week is going to be a very busy one with labor market numbers from the US, Canada, New Zealand, central bank rate decisions from Australia, the UK. So what I wanna ask you two gentlemen is what you think the best trade idea is for the coming week. Um, Francis, do you wanna go first? Uh, yes. So the coming week, a week is a, is a significantly bigger time frame, obviously, than the uh, 45 minutes we've had today. Overall, uh, I would say during the course of that week, uh, I would probably expect the second half. Um, I, I would expect cryptos to have found uh, a slightly lower low than what we've had now, and then to represent very good value into the weekend. All right, we need uh, we actually need something more precise because I know firsthand how the tables could turn. You know, you may Boris may be the winner with the most pips today, but if your crypto call is spot on, you could actually turn this whole thing around. So Eight ninety nine oh nine nine Bitcoin buy. So that's thirty eight oh nine nine uh, on a Bitcoin buy. If it comes down that far, I'm not sure it will. And then you would, I'd run it back up to the 40,000 uh, again for a, a through the 40,000. So you can take it up to 40,170, where it'll probably have a rest one more time before we break higher. Uh, stop loss uh, on that. Uh, I wouldn't want to see it run uh, this candle low over here. So I'll just show you where I'm pointing um, there. So that level is in and around the 37.360s. What about you, Boris? What are you looking at for the coming week? Well, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to stay with my idea that markets are oversold. Looking at my chart here, this is the uh, this is the daily of, of the uh, NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ topped out 15,200. 15, That's going to be my stop. I want to get short here, 14,871. And let's see if we can get this down to maybe 14... Um, 500. That would be my, my, my first target on this move. Um, as you can see, the NASDAQ has had a very, very strong move. We, we uh, touched the lower end of our, of our proprietary average, um, moving average envelope. That suggests that sellers really, really um, have the upper hand. Second bounce. Now we're coming back off. I think we're going to start breaking that down to the downside. So I got to believe that NAS is going to be a sell Oh, for the next three or four days, as we as profit taking really starts to kick in, I want to be in front of that trade. So short now, 15,200 15, my stop, 14,500 my target. Great stuff. So now let's bring back the scoreboard and um, see you know where we're at with everything and any open trades that we've got. So um, from a, this is Boris's uh, dashboard and He's um, up, got some nice trades. He, all of his trades are closed except for the NASDAQ trade, which we just put on for the coming week. He's short the markets. We've got a lot going on, so we'll have to see whether he's right or not. Now, on to Francis's trades. 
Um, we'll bring the scoreboard back up for that. Francis has a lot more open positions. He's um, got long uh, Ethereum as well as um, some other positions. Uh, Francis traded less than um, yeah. Boris. Um, he's down. But as I said, I know firsthand in my own experience how um, the, 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 the table could turn when we go look at these longer term trades. <laughs>